The goal is really to change the conversation through which we talk about the public sector, the way we talk about growth, smart, inclusive, sustainable growth, how to get there, and especially to change the way that we, if you want, think about the relationship between finance and the real economy. And we'll have uh, lots of brilliant speakers on this. Um, I'm going to say a bit what I mean by changing the conversation, so you don't think this is just a trendy sort of introduction. But before I do that, I have to do the sort of Oscars thing and thank all sorts of people, and I promise I won't cry. Uh, <laughs> so the first, of course, is a Secretary of State, Vince Cable who is actually the host this evening. You cannot book this room without someone in government, and he is our uh, host who will also be giving quite an inspirational speech. Sorry, I, I still have to go on for about 10 minutes. Uh, but <laughs> stay, stay in your place. The second is the Brazilian Development Bank, BNDS, which actually funded, um, is our main sponsor. We have different sponsors, but they're surely the main sponsor. Um, and they are one of the most active state investment banks in the world in the innovation area. And we are very lucky to have uh, Luciano Coutinho here, who is the president of BNDS. He'll be speaking later. We also have the director of innovation, João Ferraz. And we have the uh, Brazilian ambassador to the UK, Roberto Javaribe, who's here. Third, I really want to thank the Institute for New Economic Thinking, otherwise known as INET, uh, initially funded by George Soros, but now he's managed to convince his other rich friends to co-fund with him, uh, some of whom are here. And the most important thing about INET is not just that it's financing a research project, which Professor Randy Ray and I are uh, uh, coordinating together, called Financing Innovation, uh, but especially that they really are inspiring economists all over the world to think differently, uh, to encourage uh, heterodox economics to actually be taught, not only researched, in economics departments. And so we definitely want to thank them for financing, especially the third day, because this, th this conference is kicking off tonight, but it's going to go on and on. Uh, the second day is practitioner-led. The third day is academics-led. Tonight, it's all of us. And by the way, we're all dancing at the end. When you <laughs> replied to Caroline's email, you did tick the box that you were dancing. I'm sure you didn't realize, but you did that. You cannot leave until you've danced. And Vince, you, you have danced even publicly before, if I recall, on television. Okay. <laughs> on Strictly Come Dancing, so this will not be hard, at least for one person. Um, fourth, I want to uh, thank my own uh, institution, which is SPRU, the Spot Science Policy Research Unit, founded by Chris Freeman 50 years ago. Um, and we have, uh, it's basically, I think, I mean, that's why I'm there, the most interesting place in the world thinking about innovation in an interdisciplinary way, thinking about what it actually means, not just to finance innovation, but to actually really think critically about the direction. Because innovation doesn't just have a rate, it has a direction. And we're lucky to have Johan Schott here, who's our new uh, director. He just started, uh, um, when did you start? About six months ago. And also Carol Alexander, who also is, um, she's running the business and management program in the business school of which Spru takes part of. She very generously co-funded this event as well. And runs a very interesting program where financing and fi finance and uh, anyway, financial economics is, is done in an extremely interesting way where they actually differentiate risk from uncertainty, which is a major uh, feat. Anyway, so what do I mean by uh, thinking differently and actually changing the conversation tonight? I'm going to sort of just list this because there's no time to do any uh, deep thinking, at least from my end, because you're going to hear some great keynotes after this. I'm going to list them similarly to how I do at home when I kind of put lists on the refrigerator that my four kids are supposed to think about somehow during the week. So forgive me if it feels a bit fridgy or almost bucket listy, really. So the first is that what we're talking about over these three days is not market fixing. Okay, We will be talking about the role of the public sector in all sorts of dimensions, but not just about fixing markets. This is actually what we mean by the title of the conference, which is Mission-Oriented Finance for Innovation. If we think about those interesting places around the world where you've actually had smart innovation-led growth, you've actually had government through a decentralized sort of network structure uh, doing all sorts of uh, courageous uh, thinking and investments all along the uh, innovation chain, but often led by big challenges, by big missions, which could have been putting a man on the moon in the past. And today, if you look, for example, at what state investment banks are doing, at least some of them, it's very much this you know, tackling the climate change challenge. But of course, there's also socioeconomic challenges like aging. Anyway, this is very different from thinking of government just coming in and putting little patches here and there. 
Um, uh, right, and by the way, we have here with us some of the, uh, when, when we go on to the practitioners at the end of both this evening, but also tomorrow, day two, we have some of the leaders of these organizations that we purposely chose because we think they're mission-oriented. One of these is, for example, ARPA-E, which today is doing in the energy space what DARPA did for the internet, imagining the space before it actually even exists. Um, next point is that to do this, you are going to fail. You are going to take risks, of which most of your projects will not do so well. Now, what does that actually mean for the way we structure government organizations so they welcome failure? Um, as opposed to fear it, and what does it also mean from, um, for the indicators for actually evaluating the performance of different types of government initiatives when we actually are asking government to push the boundaries to go into those spaces that the, that the private sector is not going, how can we actually measure their performance and at the same time, uh, uh, if you want, acknowledge that it's going to be not only very difficult, but you're precisely entering this uncertain space where most of your attempts will fail. This, in fact, brings us in some ways to the whole inclusive growth agenda, because by admitting that government is and has to be, in the innovation area, a lead risk taker, forming these areas before they even exist with then the private sector entering, um, we should actually start changing the ways we talk about it, literally, like de-risking. How lame is that? <laughs> uh, government did not de-risk the internet. It took on that risk. And that really brings us to a key question that will be sort of cross-cutting um, on day two and day three, which is how do we really socialize not just the risks, but also the rewards? Is the current tax system working in such a way that these inevitable failures, if you want, which government will have when it sort of undertakes these investments in a courageous way, do we actually have the tools in place which will allow the successes, right? For every internet, 20 Concords, for every Tesla, uh, nine cylindras for some of the successes to also have a direct uh, mechanisms to bring back some money to the coffers, which can both cover the losses and fund the next round. Lastly, I just want to say that none of this is impossible without actually getting the brightest people into government, making it sexy to work inside different types of public institutions, just as sexy as going into Google and uh, Goldman Sachs. And here, really, I think there's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more we talk about government as just fixing market failures, the harder it is to attract that kind of talent. And actually, that wasn't the last point. The last point is now, which is that, obviously, we, the state can do nothing without a very committed private sector. And this is going to be something that we address very explicitly tomorrow, which is how do we not only reform finance so we get more long-termism, which anyone who thinks about innovation wants, but also definancialize the real economy, industry, so that we actually get the kind of uh, you know, uh, commitment towards investment in not just R&D, but human capital and pushing these frontiers of the sort, by the way, we do see in Google. I really think Google's an exception. We're extremely lucky to have the uh, vice president of energy in Google with us here, who, by the way, was also the first director of ARPA-E. Um, and that sort of mix of background is absolutely wonderful for us to be hearing so we don't get into this private versus public mythology. Anyway, now we can move on. Uh, just to tell you briefly what's happening tonight, because there's been a bit of a change in program. We're going to hear now from um, the Secretary of State, Vince Cable. We will then be served our first course, warm first course, not kind of face, for about 10 minutes. Um, then we will hear Luciano Coutinho, the president of the NDS. Andy Haldane and Carlotta Perez will be in dialogue through their uh, two speeches through a wonderful moderator who unfortunately is not in the program because I actually sent him the email inviting him the day he left to be on vacation. And today he came back, so it couldn't have been better in terms of actually getting him. And this is Larry Elliott, who's a very well-known uh, economics journalist for The Guardian, but also, I think, well-known around the world because of the quality of his um, journalism, and we're very lucky that he'll be moderating that session. Then we'll be served our second course, um, and then we will hear provocations and reactions by different practitioners, of which one change is that Christian Motzfeld, for some reason, didn't get onto the program. He has been on the program on the web. He's the uh, president of the Danish Growth Fund. And then that's when we're all going to dance the night away, <laughs> led by our Secretary of State. <laughs> so without further ado, um, thank you, Vince, for coming.